Hello and welcome to the program. In Jeremiah 50, 45, the word says in the first part of it, therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord. And that's what I want to talk to you today about, hearing the counsel of God. And so many Christians are so caught up in just every type of so-called counsel that's out there, but it has nothing to do with God, nothing to do with his word, nothing to do with his kingdom. Well, we as Christians have to take heed and hear the counsel of the Lord. And yes, God can use work through people to speak forth his counsel. Yes, there are true Christian biblical counselors. But if someone that you are receiving counsel from is not giving you the counsel of the Lord, what is in the scriptures, then you need to just, you know, just shut it out. Because anything that's contrary to God's counsel will affect your life. Yes. And this is something that we need to have an understanding about. We can't just take in everything, you know, we hear, everything we see, everything that we think is uh, supposedly godly and receive it as God's counsel. God's word, that's his counsel to us. What he speaks through his written word, what he speaks through his spoken word. He may come to you in a, a, a thought. He may come to you in a, a vision. He may speak to you audibly. The host, Holy Spirit may lead and guide you and prompt you. Like I said, he may work through somebody. He may work through a pastor, a preacher, or a counselor, or a minister. But anything that is contrary to what God's word says, you need to throw it out. Don't just listen and take heed to everything and believe that it's God's counsel. Because there's so much false doctrine, so much just, you know, garbage out there that people are just heaping up and they never check it out in the word. Well, God's word is the final measure. That's what we measure everything by. And like I always say and have for many years in this ministry, if it doesn't line up with the word, then you need to throw it out like a tub of dirty dishwater. Because that's all it's good for. We need to only be immersed in God's word in his presence, hear the counsel of the Lord and take heed to it and then walk in obedience to it. Because God, yes, he will work through people in counsel. So I'm not saying that you're just to not ever go to a counselor. What I am saying is you need to make sure you choose wisely those you are receiving from. Make sure if they're counseling you, they're counseling you from the word of God. Obviously in this ministry, that's a part of the ministry I do is I counsel people. But I never counsel people apart from the scriptures. Just giving somebody, you know, your opinion and it doesn't line up with God's word, that's not going to help people to, to move into that area of freedom in their life. That's not going to help them to grow in the things of God. We need to give the counsel of the Lord. First, we need to hear for ourselves the counsel of the Lord. And then, yes, we can give it to others. We can teach others. We can show others, you know, what we've learned. But it has to go back to being God's counsel and only his counsel. In Jeremiah 23, 18 through 22... For who has, who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? And who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, and it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. For the anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter day ye shall consider it perfectly. Have I not sent these prophets? Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and have caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. He said, if these so-called prophets that are just speaking all kinds of lies, but they're saying, thus saith the Lord, guess what? If they had waited at my feet, if they waited at my counsel, then they would cause my people to hear my words, and that's how they can turn them from their evil ways, from their evil doings. But people are not listening to the counsel of the Lord. They're listening to every voice that's out there, and they're not discerning whether it's the voice of the Holy Spirit or the voice of the enemy or the voice of the flesh. We have to make sure it's the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking. It says that who has stood in the counsel of the Lord, in verse 18, and has perceived and heard his word, who has marked, who has marked his word and heard it. So we have to mark God's word, and we need to listen to it. And we need to run with it. We need to walk with it. That's the counsel that we're to take heed to. That's how we're going to be able, not only in our own lives, to walk in victory, but also help others walk in victory, to stay on this narrow pathway. It's a narrow pathway because most people choose the broad way. As we've looked at so many times in this teaching ministry, that most people choose the broad way. They choose that way because it's, it's, 
It's all the bells and whistles. It's easy on the flesh. You know, it's just, as the Bible says, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. Those are the things that a lot of people get enticed. They get they get to that place where they just give in to the for, forbidden fruit, and they never, you know, listen to the Holy Spirit. And that's why they're in the messes they are. Well, we need to take heed to God's counsel, to listen to his voice, and to apply his heart, excuse me, to apply his word to our hearts, and then start walking daily on this narrow pathway. This word of God is a, the narrow pathway, because a lot of people don't want to, have to spend time in God's word. They don't want to listen to God's counsel. They don't want to listen to people who are speaking God's counsel. They just want their ears tickled. They just want to, and I get this so many times when people call or come to this ministry, and they just want you to pray some generic microwave prayer for two seconds and think that everything's going to be hunky-dory. Well, no. Prayer is is supposed to be surgical. In this ministry, it is surgical. I don't just put Band-Aids on people's wounds and pat them on the back and say, oh, you know, I feel better. We need to get to the root. We need to find out what's going on. We need to, you know, I want to show forth the counsel of the Lord, what his word says, you know, about any given topic, whether it be healing, whether it be deliverance, whether it be a number of things. But so many people, they don't want to listen to God's counsel. They don't even, or if, if, or they just want partial counsel because some of it just, it get great upon them. Well, we can't, we, have, we can't just have a, a partial gospel. It's a full gospel. We can't have partial counsel. It's full counsel. In fact, look what Paul said in the book of Acts. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, look what he said, Acts 20, verse 27. He says, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. There's another translation that says the whole counsel of God. And that's what I decree and declare this ministry. I will not shun to declare unto you all the whole full counsel of God, not just the parts that are comfortable, but the whole word. See, a lot of people, oh, yeah, they're churches and ministers preaching the word. But not, for the most part, they're not preaching the whole word. They're just picking out the comfortable parts. They're just picking out the ones that that um, uh, are comfortable uh, for their listeners, ones that won't offend people. But you get some of these deeper areas, some of these controversial subjects. Oh, they don't want to preach that because they don't want people leaving their church or leaving their ministry. Well, guess what? If they leave, then guess what? Let, 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 the, door, let the door hit them on the way out. Because if you're not there to worship God and to receive his word and to go forth and to walk in it in your life, then guess what? then you have a, 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 a wrong heart motive. We, we shouldn't be there just to get, you know, these little pieces of, 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 of the truth. We need the whole truth. So ministries and churches that think, oh, well, you know, I don't, I, 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 I can, I'll, I'll preach on this certain area, but I won't preach this area. No, we can't be like that. We have to preach the whole word. See, there's so many ministries and churches that are not preaching the whole counsel of God, as Paul talks about in this verse. You know what? There's some places that, you know, they're very good in worship and praise. But they won't talk, they won't touch deliverance or healing. And there's some that are good in healing and deliverance, but they won't touch worship and praise. Or there's some that just talk about, you know, the end times events, and we need that, but they don't talk about anything else. They don't have to have time to worship God. Well, we need all of it. We need the full counsel of God's word. And we need to hear it and we need to walk in. We need to apply it. We need to be preaching about loving Jesus and, 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 and soaking in his presence. We need to be preaching about by his stripes we're healed and understanding that we can receive healing in our bodies because he already did it on the cross 2,000 years ago. We need to understand the ministry of deliverance. We need to understand uh, the importance of casting out demons and get rid of and moving out curses and strongholds. We need to understand about the end times and, 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 and the uh, end time sequence of events and understanding uh, our position, you know, uh, of who we are in Christ, you know, the rapture of the church, all these things, the full counsel of God, the whole word. Think about it. In Psalms chapter 1, in fact, we're going to look at several Psalms. Chapter 1, verses 1 and 3, or 1 through 3, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, or his word, doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It shall. Why? Because it's cause and effect. Because he delights in the Lord, and does not, look at verse 1, does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So there's the key. If you want to be able to 
to prosper in everything you put your hand to, if you want to be able to rise above every circumstance, if you want to be able to move forward instead of backwards, if you want to be able to go to the next level of victory in your life, then you're going to have to make sure that you're not taking heed to ungodly counsel because there's a lot of worldly. And even in the church, it's a sad thing, but there's a lot of worldly counsel in the church. It's in ministries out there because they're not counseling using God's word. They're just counseling out of a lot of... Uh, you know, psychobabble, a lot of, you know, baloney that has a, a bunch of new age, you know, uh, garbage attached to it. Well, we need to be counseling out of God's word. That's how we're going to be able to not only see victory in our lives, but help, help other people see victory in theirs. So we're blessed if we do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners and sit in the seat of the scornful. We can't be in that, that kind of fellowship with those people. Yes, we minister to all people, absolutely, but we don't have fellowship with all people. There's a difference. We fellowship with those who are on the same page, like precious faith, those who are in full agreement with God's word. But if we think that we're going to just, you know, just take heed to every counsel out there, even if they say they're Christian, but it doesn't line up with God's word, then we're deceiving ourselves. We have to hear the counsel of the Lord and walk in it. That's how we're going to be like these trees planted by the rivers of water. That's how we're going to be unmoved, unshaken, and whatever we put our hands to will prosper, because we serve the God who prospers us. But our part is to hear the counsel of the Lord and to walk in it. See, that's cause and effect. You can't just hear and then just do what you want to do. You need to he first hear the word, as the Bible says in Romans, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You say faith came by having heard it once. We have to hear and hear and hear and what we've heard. Now we need to be doers of what we've heard, put it into practice. But it has to be the counsel of the Lord. Psalm 16, 7. It says, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. In my reigns also shall instruct me in the night seasons. See, God's counsel will even uh, minister to you even in the night seasons, in dreams and visions. See, God is not limited in himself. People put limits on God all the time. He's not limited in himself. He can do, as the Bible says, exceeding abundantly above anything we can ask, think, or dream, or even imagine, according to the power, that power of the Holy Spirit who works on the inside of us. But we have to know that he has given us counsel, his counsel. And it's up to you, because you have free will. He made our free will sovereign. He's not going to force us to receive it, but he wants us to receive it. That's his greatest desire, that we will receive his counsel so that he can instruct us in the night seasons, as well as in the daytime and everything in between. But it's going to be up to you to be determined to say, you know what, I'm only going to walk and take heed to the counsel of God. I'm not going to listen to every wind of doctrine because, you know, it, it sounds good to the flesh. No, we have to walk and live by the Spirit. Does it sound good to the Holy Spirit who's living on the inside of you? You can ask him. He's a gentleman. You can have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of people, they think that he just, you know, he's just, you know, this, because he's the third member of Godhead, that he's the least important. He's just, you know, uh, some kind of little spiritual force that has no feelings. No, no. He is much God as the Father and the Son are, and he is a person, and he wants that fellowship. He wants you to listen to his voice and to receive the counsel. He's counseling us daily about things we need to do and things we don't need to do, but are we listening? Are we putting into practice what he's counseling us with? Think about it. Psalms 33, 10 and 11 says, The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. See, the counsel of the Lord stands forever, forever. His counsel, his word, as we talk about so much in this ministry, the word of God stands forever. That's one of, of the foundational scriptures that uh, of this ministry in Isaiah 40. But notice in verse 10, he says, The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen, or the nations, to naught, to nothing. It makes the devices of them of no effect because the counsel of those who are ungodly or those who are so-called Christians, but they're, they're going back into the muck and mire of the world. Guess what? Their counsel is not going to stand for it. Their counsel is going to come to nothing because that's all it is. It, can't, it doesn't help save, deliver, or heal anybody. But God's counsel, verse 11, is what stands forever. And his thoughts to all generations. So it would be wise to take heed and to hear the counsel of the Lord, and start walking in it on a daily basis. Get yourself immersed in his word, immersed in his manifest presence, and shut out all the other voices, shut out all the, the world's idea of what counsel is. 
Well, let God tell you what his what the, the what the tree counsel is. Get in His Word and let Him counsel you. Get into His presence and let Him reveal Himself to you, whether whatever way He wants to do it. But make sure it is God's counsel. That's why we've been given the nine gifts of the, of the Spirit, and one of them is discernment of spirits, because there's a lot of spirits out there. And there's yes, there's the one, but there's a lot of evil spirits, and so many people they don't discern this, and they just take heed to every voice that's out there. Every time somebody that calls themselves a prophet and they they say they have a word, but they're not a true prophet from God, and all they're doing is giving you a word from the devil. Well, you don't need to take heed to that counsel or that so-called prophecy. You need to test it. The Bible says in Thessalonians, we need to test or prove all things and only hold fast to what is good, and to abstain from every form or appearance of evil. To get it out of our lives. And that goes with this with counsel. We have to test every counsel and make sure it is the counsel of the Lord. Yes, like I said, God will use people to be counselors. I, I said I counsel people in this ministry, but I only counsel them in God's word. I don't just, you know, just give them some psycho babble mumbo jumbo that, you know, a secular person would give to somebody. Because that's not what we're supposed to do as Christians. As Christians, we are to be immersed in the scriptures. That's the counsel that we give to people to help them. In Psalm 73, verse 24, says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. Think about it. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. That should be uh, the desire, the prayer of our hearts. Lord, guide me with your counsel. Because, because I, I can't do it on my own. Because, yeah, the flesh will try to get in the way. That's why we had to discipline our flesh. And that's a part of our discipline of our flesh is sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his word, getting into his counsel and say, Lord, you counsel me in this situation. You help me to understand what I need to do to go forth into the next place of victory, what I need to do in this certain area, this certain thing that's happening in my life. I need your counsel. And like I said, he will show it to you, either from the scriptures or he'll speak a word into your spirit, or he may use another person to speak a word in due season. But when it's God's counsel, it will always line up with his word every time. Psalms 81, 11 through 16 says, But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts lest, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and would turn my hand against their adversaries. For the haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. See, if people would listen to the counsel of God, he said, yes, I would subdue your enemies. He says, I will feed you, you know, uh, with the finest wheat, with honey, I will satisfy you. Think about that. He says, I gave up to their own hearts less, because why? They didn't walk in my counsel, they walked in their own. So, he doesn't want puppets. That was their free will. They, 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 they had the choice. They could either walk in God's counsel or their own. They chose their own. He said they wouldn't hearken to my voice. They wouldn't hear me. Well, guess what? They had to walk in their own counsels. And guess what? That didn't get them nowhere. Only the counsel of God will keep us on that narrow pathway. Only his counsel will keep us in that place of victory, that place of joy, that place of true peace, which is nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing overlooked, nothing ignored. And I know people are... are, are, are if you have any sense at all, you want peace in your life. You're not going to get it if you're hearkening unto every other voice out there, but turning a deaf ear to the Lord when he's trying to give you his counsel. If you walk in your own counsel, the world's counsel, or, or a so-called Christian counsel, but it's not scripture, then guess what? Then you're going to be sidetracked. You're going to be in that place of despair, of destruction. And guess what? That's how the enemy comes in and runs roughshod. We need to rise up out of that pit and start taking heed and hearing and obeying and walking in the counsel of the Lord. In Proverbs eleven fourteen, it says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So yes, we need true counselors of God. People that God has put in, you know, has ordained and put into position to help people in areas of, of yes, of de salvation and healing and deliverance and relationships and all these types of things. But also it says where no counsel is, it means when there's no counsel there, meaning godly counsel, he says the people fall. 
And that's what happens when there's no godly counsel in your life, when you're just going about things on your own and just listening to every voice and just taking heed to what your flesh says. And guess what? You're going to fall flat on your face. That's why we need to hear the counsel of the Lord and we need to walk in it. Because in, in the multitude of counselors or in that place of, of God's counsel and those who are used his word to counsel people, there's safety. It's a safe place in God's counsel. You get out of that counsel, guess what? Then you're in an unsafe place. And unfortunately, many people are there, even people that are true born again Christians, because they don't have ears to hear. And I run into this all the time with a lot of people. You know, you, you, you try to counsel them through the word. You show them what the scriptures say, not just your opinion. You show in the word and they still don't want to listen to it. They want to take heed to what they've always heard or what their pastor or their ministry leader has said. Well, if your pastor or ministry leader is saying something that's contrary to what God has written in his word, then guess what? They're wrong. Now, if they're saying and counseling you what's in his word, then yeah, believe them and, and listen to them. But if they're not, then you need to find someone else. You need to find, first you need to go to God because he's the ultimate counselor and say, Lord, you lead me to those who are truly counseling with your word, who are truly preaching and teaching and presenting your word in in full truth, accurately. Because if we don't, then the Bible, as the Bible says, we're going to fall. Because when there's no counsel there, godly counsel, people fall. I mean, they fall flat on their face. And that, that's not victory. That's defeat. And as Christians, we're called to walk in victory. We're called to be more than conquerors, more than overcomers, because of what Jesus already did on the cross. Think about it. Proverbs 12, 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So the, the foolish person, they're right in their own eyes. They think, oh, I, I got it made. I know everything there is to know. I don't have to learn anymore. They think they know it all. Well, guess what? Even the, the, the smartest person who on the earth, guess what? We all can still learn more because guess what? This, 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 this God's word is, is so vast. I mean, it, it, we haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah, we can get into deeper levels and we need to grow from faith to faith, glory to glory in deeper levels. And we do if we're spending time in his word, but we're still, we can't have this idea that, oh yeah, I'm right. Everybody else is wrong and I know it all. And, 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 and then there ain't nothing I need to know more. We're all growing daily from faith to faith. We're all growing to the next level of victory, to the next level of revelation. And we can never learn enough. We need to go deeper, but the fool thinks that he has it all right. He doesn't have to listen to counsel. The second part but says, but that he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. We have to hearken. When we hear God's counsel, we need to hearken unto it. We need to obey it. We can't just be hearers of the word, because as we see in the first chapter of James, if you just hear the word, but you don't do it, then you deceive yourself. It's just like looking into a mirror. Then you leave, then you forget what you look like. We need this word planted on the inside of us. We need to build God's word on the inside of us. So that's what comes out of our mouth daily in faith. We need to be these living epistles, these living, breathing Bibles. Because we may be the only Bible some people ever read. And like I always say, our pages then, they better be shining. We better be lights in this dark world to show people. We need to be living counsel of what Jesus has done in our lives and continues to do. So we need to understand this. Proverbs 19 20 and 21 says, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. For there are many devices in a man's heart, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. There's another, I think, another strange that says, That shall stand forever. Think about it. Hear counsel and receive instruction, so that you may be wise in your latter end. Because, like I said, we need this to build. These layers of God's uh, revelation knowledge into our hearts, into our eye gates, our ear gates, and our minds. We need to build it daily so we can grow, not stay in the same elementary stages that we were 30 years ago or how many years ago. We need to move in deeper levels of intimacy, deeper levels in prayer, deeper levels in God's word. And it's going to come when we start listening to his counsel. He said there are many devices in a man's heart, and we know this. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in that heart. The heart, as the Bible says, can be a very wicked thing. That's why we have to make sure that we get our hearts right before the Lord. But he says, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that is what stands. The counsel of the Lord, not man's counsel. Not the devil's counsel. Heaven forbid. It's certainly not, you know, the counsel of those who say they're Christian, but what they are doing is giving you a bunch of new, new age and mumbo jumbo. No, the counsel of the Lord that's what's going to stand. That's what we have to hearken to. Proverbs 24, 6. 
So I want you to get a lot of scripture because I want to bring this, 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 this places deep in your spirit so that you can get this in the forefront of your thinking. That hearing God's counsel and walking in it is so very imperative, especially now that we are in the last of the last days. That last trump could sound at any moment. So it's no time to be sitting on our hands in a comfort zone. We need to hear God's word and we need to apply it. We need to walk in it. We need to release it to others to help them get free. 24.6. It says, and by knowledge shall the... Uh, excuse me, uh, 6, I'm reading the wrong verse. 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. We talked about this earlier. There is safety in the multitude of counselors. It means godly counselors. But look at the first part. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. Godly counsel is a part of spiritual warfare. And this is something, there's no neutralized corner in spiritual warfare. We're all called to this warfare. If you're a member of the body of Christ and you're born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit, then guess what? You're a member of the army of God. You better be daily dressed in the full armor of God and going forth, equipped and anointed for the battle that's on a daily basis before us. Because, yes, there is a spiritual warfare going on every day. Satan doesn't play fair. But guess what? We don't have to fear a thing because God didn't give us spirit. He gave us love, power, and a sound mind. And as such, we can go forth with our superior weapons. The weapons that of our warfare, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, they're not carnal. They're not physical, natural weapons because those would, wouldn't get us anywhere in this spiritual war. Ours are mighty in God. They're spiritual weapons that pull down strongholds, that cast down vain imaginations and arguments that try to, to, to exalt themselves against the true knowledge of God. That's why we have to, to take our thoughts captive. That's why we have to understand how to renew our mind daily in God's word in his presence. But notice, for by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. So counsel has a lot to do with this. The counsel of God's word, the counsel of his kingdom, of his presence, of all that he is and all that he continues to be. That's going to help us to wage a good warfare. That's how we're going to be successful in spiritual warfare. That's how we're going to win every single time and not be defeated. We're not supposed to be defeated. Jesus already won the war. But we, the church, are to enforce it. We have to enforce it. And part of that is taking heed to God's counsel, not the world's counsel, God's counsel. And then in Judges 18, 5 and 6, it says, And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, of God, that we, may, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace before the Lord is your way wherein you go. Think about it. See, we have to ask counsel. We have to pray to God and say, Lord, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. So a lot of times we try to take heed to our flesh. We don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and we end up in a place we don't need to be. We end up in a disastrous place because we're not taking heed to God's counsel. We're just listening to our flesh, what we think we want to do. We need to pause and say, Lord God, I wait upon you. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Guide me in your counsel. Yes, ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know whether our way shall be prosperous. Think we need to know, Lord, is this the pathway you want me to go? Do you want me to go here today, or do you have another way? See, we have to take heed to what he's speaking. And when we do, guess what? We're going to be victorious. So it's really, really important that you get this. I want you to understand this, that we need to not listen to the counsel of the world or anybody that wants to just put a bunch of New Age garbage out there. But we are to take heed and listen and apply the counsel of the Lord, because that's what stands, and that's what's going to help us get to that next level in our walk with God. So please take this seriously. And as always, remember that God's word is what stands forever. Amen.